This week marks the 150th anniversary of John Brown's failed raid on Harper's Ferry, Virginia in October of 1859. The wild zealot John Brown led a group of radicals to attack the federal arsenal there at Harper's Ferry to seize the guns and pass them out to slaves in the South. My wife and I were there not too long ago. It's a beautiful place where the rocky bluffs meet the forest and the Potomac and Shenandoah rivers come together. Here, Brown wanted to stir up an insurrection of the slaves in the South. Historian David Reynolds says that this one man killed slavery, sparked the Civil War, and planted the seeds of civil rights. Harper's Ferry was far from a failure. This one man helped end slavery, and he did it by bringing together black and white people to fight for that in the true spirit of the Declaration of Independence and, for Brown, the Golden Rule. Emerson, Thoreau, and others in the North saw John Brown as a savior figure. The gallows on which he and six of his soldiers were hanged became like a cross of salvation for the abolitionist cause. Some say the Civil War was Lincoln's John Brown's raid on the South, written large in blood. Voices from Frederick Douglass to Dubois to Martin Luther King have echoed the just cause of John Brown. What he stood for, lived for, and died for stirs and inspires all just causes today. I remember standing on the banks of the Shenandoah there at Harper's Ferry, wondering what would have happened if John Brown had not acted on that October day 150 years ago. How long would slavery have lasted? How many more black and white people would have died on plantations and battlefields north and south? Had this one courageous crazy man not drawn the rivers of conflict together that day in Harper's Ferry, Virginia, 1859? John Brown's body may be moldering in the grave, as the old song goes, but in some way his soul does go marching on.